What is up, my camera crew? We are back here for another tutorial in DaVinci Resolve 17. Today we are going over how to create the Iron Man HUD effect in the free version. There's tons of tutorials out there how to do it in the paid version. And that is, you know, that's just kind of lame that they don't show you how to do it in the free one. So here we are going over how to make it in the free version. And also, if you're new to this channel, my name is Sam, a.k.a. Sam the Cameraman, and uh, if you guys haven't already, make sure you just smash that like button, uh, subscribe, become a part of the camera crew. I don't know why you haven't joined yet. Join it up. You know, subscribe, follow along, hit the bell notification. Also, really quick, if y'all haven't noticed or didn't see the post in the community tab, I just dropped my LUTs. They are to purchase and get. They are, I'll put a link in the description, and just a disclaimer, yes, you have to purchase them, but that also helps fund this channel, and... It'll help with giveaways. I want to do some meetups like here, you know, in Nashville or Florida or wherever, the Pacific Northwest. I just want to do, I want to meet up. I want to meet the camera crew. I want to do some really cool uh, stuff coming up here in the future, in the summer and in the fall. So that'll all help bring us together and uh, fund this channel. So thank you guys for subscribing and following along. Another thing, we're trying to hit 10,000 subs by August. I believe in us. We can do it. Subscribe. We're trying to smash the 10,000 subs. I believe it. I know we can do it. But anyways, let's not waste any more time. Let's get into DaVinci Resolve 17 and let's go over how to create a super dope Iron Man HUD effect. Alrighty, so here we are. Let's get our media in. We're going to bring uh, bring in the face that we're going to use. And that's really all we need right now. So now that we have our face in there we can cut it down and right from here we can just right click and go new fusion clip and we are going to come in down here hit the fusion tab and yes we're gonna be in fusion do not be afraid I promise you it's gonna be okay we're gonna we're gonna get through it together all right so we have our media in one and media out one so that's like our image that's coming in and this is the final image here let's bring all of this over because we want to get a little bit of more real estate here and to zoom in and out of your image I should probably explain this to y'all hold control or command and use your scroller wheel and you can just you know come in close come out whatever you would like that's how you do that all right so just to stay organized you can hit your click on your media in one and we're going to go to rename you can also hit f2 but rename this we're going to just name this face and we're going to rename this one final just so we stay organized staying organized is crucial when it comes to the fusion um, layout here and also if you notice my um, my nodes stick to the graph if you want to adjust that all you have to do is go to arrange tools right click go to arrange tools to grid to connect it I always do to grid and it just keeps it nice and pretty. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is generate some tracking data. So let's hit shift spacebar and we're going to use the planar tracker for this uh, video. Being that we're using the free version, the planar tracker comes with the free version of DaVinci Resolve. So with the planar tracker added in, we're going to hold control again and scroll in. And we're going to track her nose because her lips move, her eyebrows move a little bit, and her nose stays kind of in the same position the whole entire time. So let's just draw around her nose. And all you do is just create a little, almost looks like a mask, but it's not. It's like creating the area that we want to track. And we want to do point. And if we were trying to track like the rotation of her face and all of that, we would want to do perspective or translation, rotation and scale. For this, we're only needing to know like the X and Y coordinate because she doesn't really move her face left and right and doesn't the perspective of the image doesn't change too much. So we're going to hit translation. Everything else here is fine. You always have to make sure you hit set. This is going to set the frame in which the track starts. And if you don't do it, it'll just pop up an error message and let you know that it uh, it's not uh, going to do it. So you have to do that no matter what. So we're going to set that and then we're going to hit track to the end. We're going to let it do its thing. That was pretty dang quick. So now that we have this tracking data already here generated, what we want to do is come down to the bottom of it 
and hit create planar transform. And this right here is going to have all of the tracking data. We're going to be using this a whole bunch. We're going to generate probably like a whole bunch of these because as we add in elements, we're going to add the uh, planar transform to these different elements. And that is going to allow us to, uh, you know, have that stuff tracked to her face like it should be. All right, so now we need to create that helmet look where we don't want to see her hair. We want to make it look like she's in a helmet. So what we want to do is hit spa shift spacebar again, and we want to type in background or just back, and then background will be there. And here it merged it all in together. We don't want to do that just yet. So we have a background right here, and we have a planar transform. And I'll show you why we made that planar transform for the background in one second. Now we need to get a merge node coming in. So shift spacebar, we're going to hit merge. And we'll, if you hold shift, you can add that into this pipeline. And then we'll just drag the background to there and everything goes black. And that's how it should look. We're going to add this planar transform. If you, and in order to add this planar transform to the background, we need to add it to the mask input because we are going to draw a mask revealing her face. And that's what we need to track onto her face. Like that's why we have that planar transform. So to connect this, grab the little square, right click, drag it on the background, and just click effect mask. Now that that's there, we can hit an ellipse tool, drag that in, and we can connect this to the planar transform. And now we don't want to connect the ellipse mask to the mask effect. We want to connect it to its input. So we're going to drag it and put it onto the input. And just like that, our ellipse mask is on the uh on the image however it is not the way we want it so what we're going to do is we are going to come over to our inspector tab with the ellipse mask selected we're going to hit invert and now we're getting somewhere so we're going to soften this up just a little bit by using the soft edge and i'm actually going to if you notice right up here we have like some empty space if you have that problem you can hit shift spacebar and you can uh, just type in XF, that's a transform. And this is gonna allow us to uh, zoom in if we wanted, just crank the size up just a little bit. So we don't have that empty space on the top and bottom. And that'll all just depend on like your uh, aspect ratios and everything else. But if you have it, simple fix right there. Let's get back to the ellipse mask. And we're gonna wanna just kind of size it up. You can pull it, you can do it by just pulling on either side of the uh, um, ellipse mask like this or you can use your width and your height down here. I kind of like it where it's at right here. We can just soften it up just a little bit more and let's uh, watch it back. And It looks like it's tracked on very very nicely so that's perfect. I might make the mask just a little bit bigger on the bottom end. There we go. And then maybe bring the soft edge down just a little bit. And we can make it a little bit wider. So just like that, that right there, now our helmet look, quote unquote, is uh, in effect. So now the fun stuff starts. We can start adding in our elements. So what we want to do from here is we want to open up our media pool. And let's add in, let's add this one in right here. So we're going to drag that in. Um, let's turn our media pool off. And again, I would rename this. So we're going to rename it. Let's just do HUD one. And we need to create another merge. So you can hit the shift space bar and uh, add in a merge that way. Or if you come up onto your quick selection tools here, right above you, this little box with an arrow is a merge as well. And you can just add it straight into your pipeline, which is super awesome. We are going to come to our planar tracker, hit another create a planar transform. And just like that, we're going to connect our HUD one into the input of the planar transform and connect that into our merge. Okay, now that it's all connected, we can see that it's just an overlay. It's like a video over our video. We can't see the face. So in order to make this a transparent, we want to make sure our merge two selected is selected. And we want to go to our apply mode and we want to hit screen. And now that takes away all of the black parts of our image and just leaves it the color and leaves it as a transparent image. So it also what you can do with your merge selected is come up here and you got these arrows. You can drag your image around and we can see that our video 
or our layer is much bigger than what the uh, video layer is. So let's bring the size down. You can adjust all of this within your merge. We're going to bring that size down just a little bit. And we're going to bring it over to this side of her face. What we want to do is we want to make it almost look like it's in 3D space. We want it to kind of curve around her face, like almost like it's going kind of like around it. So in order to do that, what we need to do is make sure we select our planar transform, hit shift spacebar and type in D V E. And this almost acts as like a fake 3D, you know, layer. We can adjust it like really cool. So if we come down here, we can uh, what the DVE layer selected. If we come to like the Y, we can see that it almost makes it look like we're in that 3D space. And we can pull this out, kind of making it look like it's away from her a little bit. And if we come back to the merge, I'm going to crank that size up just a little bit. And now as we play this back, it should track to her face. That's looking pretty dang good if you ask me. So now that this is tracked to her face, we have it kind of moved in 3D space. We need to do a couple more things to like really sell that effect. One of them is adding a glow feature. You know, why would the hologram not have a little bit of a glow, right? So make sure the DVE is selected. We're gonna hit shift spacebar and we're gonna type in glow and we're gonna add in a glow node. So just like that, we're gonna just crank that glow size up just a little bit. And ooh, that's too much, see? You wanna just play with this and get it kind of how you how you would want it. And if it's a little too powerful, like if, if you think that the, uh, the overlay or this image isn't transparent enough, you can come to your merge node and go to settings. And this blend acts as opacity. So we can like, if you bring it all the way down, it just goes away and we can like, you know, let's split that difference just right there. And now this image looks pretty dang cool. I'm going to slide it over even though it's a little bit more. Actually, yeah, let's slide it over just a little bit more. Heck yeah. So there we go. Our first image is tracked on to her face. It kind of comes on and it looks really, really good. It moves with her. So if we wanted to add a whole bunch of different um, HUD effects, you could just repeat this process completely from start to finish. Should we just create another planar transform by clicking on the planar tracker? You just generate another planar transform and then you add in your HUD effect and you just kind of add the DVE look, you know, get it to go around her face and then you add in your glow and you could just keep repeating that same process over and over and over again. And you could add as much HUD effects as you want. And also if you're wondering where to get HUD effects, I got mine from Storyblocks. This is not a sponsored video, but they have a lot of really cool like HUD effects and just any stock video that you could ever uh, want and or need. All right, so the next thing we want to do is sell this effect just a little bit more. And by doing, in order to do that, we want to add in a subtle glowing light on her face to make it look like that HUD is kind of like spilling some light onto her face. So in order to do that, we want to hit shift space bar, when hit color corrector, and we're gonna add that right into the pipeline right after that planar transform or the planar tracker that we originally did. We wanna do it all before the effects that we add in because we don't want, if we adjust the color after that uh, black background that we added, it's going to show like color spill on that. We don't wanna do that. We wanna adjust everything before that. And that's why we put it before all of that in the pipeline. So. First, let's um, make sure we come to where we want to start. We need to keyframe all of this because it's like the HUD doesn't just come on right away. It, it kind of like turns on. So we need to go start with nothing and then have it kind of, you know, turn on with the HUD. So we want to keyframe the color and we want to keyframe the brightness. And the next thing we want to do is come to the spot where that HUD starts turning on kind of like fully. And I think we could probably come to right here and uh, now we're gonna add in some light. And if we want, we can actually hit number one on our keyboard with the color corrector node selected. And it's gonna show us the, our image. And we want more teal, I would say, like right there. Let's crank that brightness just a little, oh, that's too much, way too much. Let's crank the brightness just a little bit. And now what we need to do is we need to click our planar tracker again and hit another planar transform. And we need to also 
uh, make another ellipse mask. And we want to draw this mask on her face like where that light would be shining. So this is on her right side or left side of her face. So we're just going to draw that mask kind of just like a rough mask like right here. Doesn't need to be perfect and I'll show you why. We're going to soften that edge and we're going to connect it to, we want to make sure right now it's connected on the mask uh, input on the planar transform. We want to connect it to the actual input of it. And we're going to hold our right mouse button and we're going to drag onto the color corrector and we're going to select effect mask. And just like that, we have our mask or our masked uh, light on our face. So if we just soften that up just a little bit more, that looks really, really good. And what we can do now is if we have our color corrector selected, come over to settings. And again, we can play with that blend. So it's not too much. It's just ever so slightly like happening. And let's adjust our mask just a little bit because it's spilling off of her face. And we don't want that. We want it to look natural and real. All right, so now that we have that mask tracked on with that planar transform and we have the uh, light keyframed on, we can come back to our edit page and we're gonna let this buffer out and we're gonna watch it through and see what it looks like. All right, so now that it is all buffered through or rendered out, let's hit Control F and let's play this and watch it. And just like that, that light keyframes on to her face. So this is a super cool effect, and this is an easy way to do it in the free version. Uh, I hope you guys like this uh, tutorial. Let me know if it helps y'all in any kind of way. Make sure you guys are subscribing because you don't want to miss out. Check out my new LUTs. They are, like I said, link in the description. You don't want to miss out on those. They're super badass. They're the only LUTs you'll ever need to buy. And I'm also coming out with like three or four more packs I'm in the works on, but I figured I'd get some out to y'all right away. But thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you like it, subscribe, smash the thumbs up button, hit that bell notification, share this with everybody that you know that might want to learn how to do a super dope Iron Man effect. But anyways, I'm going to catch y'all in the next one.